Hi and welcome to our lesson today entitled The Dreaded Chaturanga. I know that sounds a bit overwhelming and scary, but Chaturanga is a pose or a transition pose that is quite complicated and involves quite a lot of upper body strength. So before we get into it, I'm going to give you a few important poses to practice before to build that upper body strength. All right, so Nick, you're going to come onto your hands and your knees, please. All right, then to build that upper body strength, because a lot of us spend most of our time sitting or standing or driving, we don't have upper body strength. So really important in our yoga practice to strengthen our entire bodies, including that upper body stuff. So bring your elbows down onto the floor. All right. Grab a hold of the tops of your elbows, uh, tops of your shoulders, so that your elbows are closer together than your shoulders. Yes. Then release your hands, interlace your hands. I like to tuck that one baby finger underneath so it doesn't get squished and then cross your thumbs over one another. So you're really squeezing your hands together. You're pressing hands into the mat, wrists, forearms, and elbows, really pressing down strongly. Then tuck your toes under, inhale here, and exhale, lift your bum up to the ceiling. Your head and neck are relaxed. All right, then start to walk your feet a little bit closer in towards your face. Press down into your elbows as much as you can to lift your shoulders. Lift your shoulders, yes, there we go. Okay, so you're pressing down to get a little bit of lift here. Are you feeling it in your shoulders? Good, we're gonna hold it here for five breaths. If you need to come down at any stage, try and hold it for an extra two before you give up. Okay, so inhale, exhale one, inhale, exhale two, Inhale, exhale three, inhale, exhale four, inhale, exhale, drop your knees down, sit back onto your heels, come into child's pose so you can take your knees wide, forehead to the mat, really extend your arms out to give your shoulders a bit of a release. All right, so that's the first one. And you can build that up to 10 breaths. So like I mentioned, if you wanna try and push it two more breaths than what you can usually handle, that's how you start developing the strength. All right, the next one is the same setup. All right, good. Interlaced fingers. This time you're gonna take where your interlaced fingers are, hang on Nick, Take where your interlaced fingers are and just bring that interlace one along so it feels a little bit uncomfortable. Okay, so what we want to do here is it's, it's an unconscious habit to link your hands. So we want to try and balance out both sides of the body in everything we do, even something as simple as that. Tuck that one baby finger underneath, cross your thumbs over one another. Tuck your toes, inhale, lift up. All right, and then you're gonna lift your gaze, look to your thumbs. On an inhale breath, bring your chin to your thumbs. Exhale, push back. Good. Inhale, chin to thumbs. Exhale, push back. Three more of these. Inhale, push, uh, chin to thumbs. Exhale, push back. Inhale, chin to thumbs. Exhale, push back. Last one, inhale forward, exhale, push back. Good, drop your knees down, sit back onto your heels, uh, forehead to the mat, and arms stretched out ahead of you. While you're in this child's pose, in between these exercises, really breathe deeply. Breathe as deeply, as fully as you can. And because you are increasing your heart rate, you can extend your exhalation to bring that heart rate back down. Okay, third exercise, coming onto your elbows again. This time take your hands a little bit further forward. Okay, uh, interlace your hands, so same setup. Elbows, yes, check the distance. Elbows must be slightly closer than your shoulders. 
if your elbows are out to the sides, you don't have a good foundation, you don't have a good base. So elbows close in. This time you're going to tuck your toes but come into a plank pose on your elbows. So not a downward facing dog, plank pose. So you can step your feet backwards a little bit. Yes. Drop your hips. But keep tucking that tailbone under. Yes. Solid tummy. Pressing up, your gaze is lifted like Nick is doing to the top of your mat. And we're going to hold a chair again, five breaths. Again, if you feel like you're going to drop your knees down, keep going for another two extra breaths every time and build all the way up to 10 breaths. Okay, how are you doing there? Breathing? Is everybody breathing? We're gonna take three more breaths here. Inhale, exhale one, inhale, exhale two, inhale, exhale, drop your knees down onto the floor. You can sit all the way back onto your heels into child's pose. So while I'm thinking of it, when you're in that pose, you may have experienced the shakes. The shakes are actually a really, really good indication that your nervous system is active. So when you're in a pose and you have those shakes, it doesn't mean that your muscles aren't strong enough. It's actually your nervous system getting rid of excess stress and energy that it doesn't need. So when you're in these poses and you start to shake, it's actually a really good thing. You're toning your um, nervous system. So really good if you have the shakes. So your homework with this is to do these three poses, these three exercises, building up to 10 breaths each for the next 28 days. So try fit it in every day for the next 28 days. And you can do it while you're watching TV, while you're having a conversation with your partner. You can sit and do this and strengthen your shoulders. All right. Going into the movements now. So, the base movement of Chaturanga is plank pose. So we've worked a little bit on plank pose. I just want, um, want you to come into it again so we can go through it and refresh our memories. So, come into plank pose. Your body is in that beautiful straight line. Okay, try not to sink your hips, yes. So hips are slightly lifted, tailbone tucked under, belly button lifting up, so these core muscles are engaged, mulla bandha is engaged. You're pressing up in between your shoulder blades, so press up, 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 without dropping, yes, there we go. So you're strong, if I press down on Nick, he's pressing back up onto me. Okay, yes, good. See the shakes? Good, getting rid of the nervous energy. Okay, so plank pose, you're strong, you're solid, you're in one beautiful straight line. You can bring your knees down for a moment. When we were going through our sun salutations, we went through this knees, chest, and chin to get down to the floor. So knees, chest, and chin is the starter stage of this transition. Chaturanga is the ending stage of this transition. So Chaturanga is where we want to be, where we want to get to. And I'm including it in this beginner class because it is very important that you get this pose right. And not a lot of people explain this pose very, very well. And then students end up damaging their lower back. Okay, so another exercise to practice is this knees, chest and chin, and then pushing back up. So again, getting that um, upper body strength. All right, so come into plank pose again. Plank pose, drop your knees down, shift your weight forward, Keep your bum lift, don't drop your hips. Bum lifted, yes, arch into your back. Shift forward, chin and chest down, bum stays up. Good. And now push back up. Good. We're gonna do five of those, so that was one. Push forward, exhale lower. Two, inhale, push back up. All right, exhale lower. Good. Inhale, push back up. Exhale, lower, keep that bum lifted. Inhale, push back up. Last one, shift forward and chin and chest down. Flatten all the way down to the floor for a moment. All right, so that is a very important transition pose. 
If you cannot get Chaturanga at this stage, that's all right. Continue with knees, chest and chin while you build the strength in your shoulders. I'm giving you the Chaturanga details so that you know where you're going and you'll be able to get there safely if you do all of these exercises and develop that upper body strength. All right, so those are shoulder strengthening exercises. Now we're gonna get into Chaturanga itself. It is a very interesting pose, upper body strength, core strength. It's got a bit of a bad rep because people teach it differently. So I'm gonna teach you guys the way that I have been taught by my teachers, which is safe and good for the shoulders. All right, so Chaturanga looks like this. From plank pose, all right, so you get your beautiful, strong plank, you know, and have your bum sticking up, you're tucking tailbone under, suck belly button in, press up in between your shoulder blades. From here, Chaturanga, you're going to push your weight forward, bend elbows backwards, and you lower till your elbows are at 90 degrees. So you're lowering in that beautiful one straight line. From there, we're gonna go into upward facing dog, and then back into downward facing dog. Okay, what happens a lot in this pose is shift weight forward, elbows don't bend, and that ends up happening, and then you're stuck. You don't know where to go from here. So, in Chaturanga, the only thing that is moving is your elbows. Your hips aren't moving, your shoulders aren't moving, it's just elbows. Okay, so you push your weight forward, bend elbows, and then upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Okay, so very, very, very important that only elbows move. Your hips don't do anything. They stay in that one beautiful straight line. So from plank pose, let's go into chaturanga. So you're gonna shift your weight forward, bend elbows. Okay, so you see here, hips are sinking, elbows are not bending. So lift your hips, now bend elbows. Bend elbows, bend elbows, bend elbows, bend elbows. Keep your hips lifted, yes. And then up over your toes, upward facing dog, and then back, downward facing dog. Okay, you can come down to your knees. So you've got to be so aware when you're practicing this in your home without me there to correct you that you're not sinking those hips down because you're going to kick back into your lower back. So you have to keep yourself in that beautiful straight line and remember that your elbows are the only things that are moving. Your hips are not doing anything. So I'm going to give you a few tools to use to practice Chaturanga to make sure that you're doing it properly and you're keeping your body safe. The first one, we're going to use our strap with the D-rings. So unravel, take, make sure that the strap doesn't get twisted around. Take the strap through both D-rings on the way through and then the second D-ring on the way back. Okay. So you want to make a loop with your strap and you want that to be shoulder distance apart. That's a little bit big for me. So you just pull that a little bit, make it smaller, shoulder distance apart. All right. Taking the strap around your arms. All right. And you want just a couple of centimeters, maybe like two centimeters above your elbows. Okay. So that you can bend your elbows. There's a fallacy about chaturanga that you have to go that you're lowering just so that you're above the floor that's not true from there to get up is a lot of pressure on your shoulders so using the strap you're going to learn exactly where to stop when your elbows are at 90 degrees so you don't have to go all the way to hover just above the floor okay so get your strap ready you place the the tail just in between your legs there okay into your beautiful, strong, solid plank pose. Inhale to shift the weight forward. Hips don't move. All you're doing is bending elbows and then the strap catches you at that 90 degree angle. So that's exactly where you need to stop. From there, upward facing dog, look up, 
and then downward facing dog back okay so it's next turn to try it now all right so he sets it you can check that it's shoulder distance apart that's great around your arms so it's just about two centimeters above your elbow good okay hands down to the floor middle fingers pointing straight forward always 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 when your hands are on the floor come into plank pose all right so set your plank every time before you come into chaturanga you want to set this plank strongly so tailbones tucked belly button in pressing up in between your shoulder blades good inhale shift your weight forward all you're doing as you exhale is bending elbows good and the strap catches you exactly where you want to be over your toes into upward facing dog lift your chest and then back over your toes downward facing dog the strap might hit you in the head a little bit that's fine <laughs> we're going to give it another try this is really good to practice a few times okay so plank pose lift up in between shoulder blades lift up 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 yes inhale shift your weight forward all you're doing is bending elbows hips don't move strap catches you inhale upward facing dog look up exhale downward facing dog good drop your knees down sit back onto your heels you can unravel the strap forehead to the mat for a moment and just everybody take a few moments here reset your breath as I've mentioned before, your wrists might get quite sore as we go through this practice because we don't usually take any weight in our wrists in our everyday lives. So especially in Chaturanga, there's a lot of wrist work and your wrists might get quite sore. So at any stage during this section, if you want to stop and do a bit of wrist care, this is what you can do. Okay, first you can take your, the backs of your hands onto the mat and press that down so you're doing the complete opposite of what chaturanga is or your hands on the mat so hands down and then you're going to lean you know start to bring your hands forward a little bit and lean backwards so you're pressing into the tops of your hands and it's stretching this part of your wrist completely all right so you can do that you can hold that for about five breaths Next, you can just shake your wrists out. You can do shooting stars. All right. Also really good to interlace your hands, pull your palms away from you, and then release. And with the, the uncomfortable interlace, you can do that as well. And then really good, grab a hold of your wrist, your, right, your left wrist with your right hand, right around your wrist. Take a straight hand and then do circles with that wrist. First in one direction and then in the other direction. All right, and then swap one direction and the other direction. All right, also good to rotate into those wrists both directions as well all right so at any stage in this practice that those wrists start to get quite sore you can go through this little routine just to give your wrists a little bit of care another really great tool to use to learn chaturanga is using the block and the strap together the block is really good at catching the hips because that's the the general fault is releasing hips down when they should be kept straight up in line with the shoulders so the straps the strap will keep your elbows in and catch you where you need to be caught where you need to stop and then the the block will catch your hips where your hips need to stop so grab your block and your strap strap comes around your arms about two centimeters above okay and then your block comes on the highest level it should be just underneath your belly button to start off with okay all right strap and block are ready 
From here, inhale, shift your weight forward. Exhale, bending elbows. The strap catches you, the block catches you. So that you are in your perfect chaturanga without much effort. Then you're gonna try and <laughs> plunk the block over into upward facing dog and back into downward facing dog. Okay. Your turn to try. Okay, so strap around your arms. Not too high up, so only about two centimeters above. Block should be just under your belly button. Okay. Good. Come into plank pose. All right. This block is a little bit too far forward, so should be just underneath your belly button as you set up. Inhale. As you exhale, shift your weight forward. Don't move your hips, bend elbows. Strap catches you, block catches you. You could hang out there for like five minutes, right, Nick? Yeah, happy. So you're, you're caught, you're propped up, your hips are propped up with the block, the strap catches you, and you're in the perfect plank pose. Try not to drop your head, so keep your neck up in line with your spine, good. All right, so that's what your plank pose looks like. Use the props to get it right. You want to try and knock the block over. There we go. Upward facing dog. And then back to over downward facing dog. Beautiful. Sit back onto your knees. You can release block and strap. All right. So all of these practices that I've given you with the different tools, you, you are going to practice yourself at home as often as you can. All right, so we're not gonna go over it 29 times today because Nick might die and might divorce me. So, so in your own time, you're gonna use this course again, this lecture again, go over it and practice, 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 develop that strength. 